with the release of Monarch, we saw Sonata Arcanics, which breathed a bit of new life into Viserai. Um, what are your thoughts on... Well, I think Viserai has picked up a couple of Road to Nationals wins already. What are your thoughts on him out in the wild? Well, Chain's not the only rune blade that we have in the game. And like, Viserai is actually really benefited from Monarch and it's just from one single card really, Sonata and a, a few other that just like helps out. And it's just a really interesting take on on the ODK um, Viserai deck because there was a lot of huge flaws with the ODK Viserai deck where like it's so linear you knew that they're not going to do anything until they just like kill you so there were so many decks that just had like the easiest time against mm -hmm. ODK Viserai Viserai, um, including decks like Chain and um, Levi was just very good against it. But with Sonata, you can start to go off with like maybe like 16 rune charts and stuff like that. And the deck is a real deal. And and I think like, I think that deck is actually like really nicely situated against certain chain decks. Mm. I don't believe the deck is very good against the Razor Reflex um consuming volition combo version of the deck and the reason it's not is it's so much pressure you're going to be letting them hit with snatch command and conquer and line strike consuming volition and they have razor reflex and you don't play defense reactions in this deck which is a which is the biggest difference like this deck is a lot worse against like the Rymphia and your Katsu aggro decks that have these hit drivers that you really want a defense reaction in, which you which the OTK with defense reaction version actually just has a good time against. Mm. However, this deck's a lot better against my version of chain and also versions of chain that really try to set up. And the OTK Viserai deck is just it's a really nice spot if all you predict it's decks that are like really dirtily, really long, especially decks that just really rely on defense reaction. So like, I love this deck against like dash control. I love this deck against Bravo control. I just prefer not to play against a Razor Reflex deck when I'm piloting it. Yeah, yeah. I remember in your Viserai deck tank from Devastation, you mentioned, um, you made a real point that it's not about sort of just waiting with defense reactions, but you are really mixing it up with attack actions coming through throughout the whole game. Yeah, one thing you need to realize was, was like, this is like an evolution from ODK or defense reaction, but you're not like strictly better and you need to play to your strengths. And the, one of the biggest upsides that you have over them, which is also your downside, is you don't have defense reactions. Now it's a downside because now your deck's pretty bad against the Rimpia and head triggers, but it's an upside because now if you go off and your opponent's on five and you're playing the defense reaction version, you're gonna draw a hand, you're like, send below, reduce the rune charge. Yeah. I can't deal five damage to you. Put your opponent to one, I can't deal one damage to you. Yeah. But if you're playing this version, you know that, that even if your opponent falls down to like five and you saw in the game against Jacob where I like put him down early and yeah, yeah. it was a little bit skewed because he had no no um, no room, but even if he did have no room, you're able to do that with this deck, like you're not always favoured, but like you're able to do it and because of this, you can choose to pull the trigger slightly earlier, like you want to pull the trigger right before you're about to either die or do, get like a really big hit, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's just such an important tool to actually be able to start comboing off midway through and you determine when you combo off, not your opponent knows exactly when you're going to combo off. That's a really good point, because uh, with a couple of these questions, you've talked about consistency and how it's um it's quite well not easy but when an opponent has a linear game plan it kind of makes your job easier coming in to attack them but now that you've mentioned this new viserai style that you've been using it's definitely not linear anymore i mean it also it also just kind of like goes both ways like just because your opponent doesn't have, have a linear game plan doesn't mean it's a bad game plan like if what you are always going to be doing, having a linear game plan, and like my chain deck has a somewhat linear game plan with explosive turns, yeah. just because just it's linear doesn't mean it's bad. And I'm doing roughly the same things every single game. And I'm doing the same things every single game, but not necessarily every single turn. But I still consider it like a linear deck. Um, just because it's like that doesn't mean like the, my opponent can do anything about that and it's just like could just be like really well positioned so 
I do just think it's like really important to kind of know what you plan on doing with your deck mm. and decks that just do something different every single ga game it's always going to be harder to master we saw during the blitz season that it took so long for people to finally like understand Kano a bit more and even mm. then like I still think the best Kano players in the world still need another 200 hours in, in their belt and that's because these type of decks every game is different every turn is different like if you ever did like what's to play Freeze, freeze a Kano player or freeze a Levi player on the spot and be like, what's the play here? Mm. You're going to have so many different variety of options and until you fully analyze it and probably take like 20 minutes, you won't find a correct play. And being good with these decks, it's all about finding these correct plays as soon as possible. And it's just really hard decks to master. But like, I encourage everyone who's like playing decks like Kano, playing decks like Levi, just play lots of games. You don't need to fairy craft so much. Just keep playing, keep playing. Like I would prefer to instead of like going on to onto like a forum discussing how to play Leviathan for like ten hours a day. That's just not the approach to go with these type of decks. Mm -hmm. The approach to go is to keep playing, keep practicing. Decks like decks like Katsu and Bravo and Chain. These are the decks you just really want a really strong idea of what to do a strong sideboard plan and a strong deck list mm. but there's like Levi and Kano you just want practice yeah get the reps in yeah well let's talk about a uh, hero very close to your hearts and haven't seen too much of him around these days laying a bit low mm. Rhino Reckless Rampage um what makes him so unique um I feel what makes Rhino unique is his hero ability basically getting to intimidate your opponent intimidate in general it's you know it's a very brute kind of yeah, um, mechanic yeah. um but even though kind of you don't really even see that much of it in, in leviah which is another brute so i feel like that intimidate mechanic is really great against kind of extremely control or extremely addicts that try to stall a lot um, and I feel like it's it's great against um, any sort of, you know, we have um, seen a little bit of the kind of one turn kill Viscerai pop up, control Katsu, um, those kind of decks um, that kind of whole gameplay relies on defending. And as soon as you, if you play Reiner and you can intimidate up, up to three, four cards out of their hand, um, and you can get through a lot of damage. I feel like that's that's where um, Rhino shines. Is in meta games where dominated by control. Um, also, um, it's kind of like the Achilles heel of Prism, um, as I mentioned before. It's just good against all kinds of Prism because of its ability to to deal with the phantasms and spectres. Um, but yeah. Rhino just doesn't seem to be doing that great against extremely aggressive decks like Chain. I feel like it's it's just um, cannot kind of punish Chain enough, and you know it's a it's it's the only class in the game that doesn't have any on hit effects. Yeah. So it's that that's kind of the the weakness of the of the class is that um, you your opponent it, it's. Brute is all about raw damage, and raw damage is, and the whole intimidate mechanic is, it's kind of, it's great if your opponent can't do much with a four card or five card hand, but if you're kind of intimidating their whole hand just to do a bunch of um, kind of raw damage for them to get their hand back and put the pressure back on again, and just, it's just not that effective against those kinds of decks. And I think that's why uh, Reiner hasn't been doing as well as some of the other classes. Um, but yeah, I think in my um, in my deck tech video, if you had a look, there's, I basically made a list that has kind of like a combo aspect to it with, with things like the energy potions um, and kind of setting up Blood Rush Bellows or Claws um, it had a bit of an aggressive strategy in there as well with things like pulpings and, and um, predatory assaults 
and um, a bit of a control aspect as well with springboard somersaults and um, things like the romping club and the sink billows and a few de basically defense reactions. So I think that there are kind of, um, Rhino's one of those decks that you can build it as an aggressive deck, as a combo deck or as a control deck. It's, I feel like it's because of that it has that flexibility and you can kind of choose those either two sides of the through out of the three and kind of um, really adjust it based on your metagame. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't, it's kind of, it doesn't do aggression as well as something like the aggro katsu or mm, the chain. Yeah, sure. um, with the combo side, I feel like um, it, it's really hard to do like a one turn kill combo, something like Viserai um, or the Saber Bolt in list that we've been seeing. And there's other control decks that like, like Guardian or um, yeah, the Katsu control, I guess, or dash control that mm. can play that control um, a bit better as well. So it's kind of, I think, yeah, Reina is, you can build it to kind of find a sweet spot between two things. And that's why it has a very kind of even matchup along um, against a lot of the field um, with a few exceptions. And I, to be honest, I do feel that um, it's, uh, if you're playing Reina and you, um, because of how much um, kind of aggro um, katsu and the explosive chains there are, and it, even the Guardian matchup, I think, isn't that great. Um, if if that is the field, you're, you you're gonna you're gonna struggle. But if you kind of gear your deck to beat one of those, um, and the field is filled with with things like that, then then you should be fine. Yeah. I feel like it's 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 just a great deck to beat all the con like all the control decks. I'd say that's cool. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it's still a very strong class, a very strong hero. It's just this isn't the meta game for it, kind of in in general all, all over the world. There might be some kind of the the micro meta games that it's very good. Mm. Um, but in, in general, from the results that we've seen, I think it hasn't been as strongly positioned overall as it could be. But at, just as Kano, I feel like there are there are, there are those um, meta games that you can do um, that it can be a really solid choice. For. Yeah. So how has Rona evolved since um, well since the start of Monarch and going through the Broken National season? And what are your thoughts on some of the well, we've seen a few lists out there. Maybe they're Rota Nationals, maybe they're not. But yeah, what have you seen in Rona that's really, I don't know, made you think about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think Rona got a bit, I got a few goodies from Monarch. Um, uh, some of the biggest ones are Pulping. I think Pulping is a great aggressive card. Um, I think it can really kind of create a lot more explosive turns. Mm -hmm. If you go for a big Blood Rush Bellow turn, for example, Pulping can be a key card to really pressure your opponent and uh, punish your opponent for not having defense reactions. Um, so I feel like it can really, um, it gave um, uh, Rhyna those kind of aggressive tools if you want to play a very aggressive deck. Um, tear Limb from a Limb is another one. Yeah. I think it's a really big one where um, basically I personally like having just one copy because one copy is all you need. Sorry, man. It's all you need. Um, play it out, head whack them for a massive turn, and um, hopefully um, deal enough damage to finish the game. It's just the classic finisher that I feel like Reiner kind of lacked before. And it's a card that is quite hard to set up because of that kind of randomness factor for uh, to it. So you have to know what's on top of your of your deck, mm. but. Um, if you if you play with it long enough, I feel like it's a card that you hate at first, but learn to love yeah. and, and really learn to appreciate. Um, so I feel like yeah, one like really kind of um, kind of expanded the ways Rhino can be built. Um, but yeah, it's still a quite, quite a skill intensive deck. I feel like on, on the surface it seems really. Um, 
it seems really random. You know, you have the scab skins, you have the ran draw a random card, discard a random card, mm. um, which can put a lot of people off, especially if you're, um, you know, want to do well in a tournament. Uh, but I feel like it's once you get your head around it, once you learn how to set those plays up, it actually it actually becomes really powerful, and it's it can be very you can have that element of surprise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have no idea how many games I've won by my opponent not knowing what Reckless Swing does. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you just play out a game and you see your opponent drop to two life and you go, okay, I'm it's just going to defend until yeah. I draw the card. Yeah, and, yeah. Pretty good strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wins games. Mm -hmm.